it's time for GarageBand Weekly, the only, possibly, <laughs> show all about GarageBand on the internet, and we're doing it live, right here on Studio Live today, let's do it. Yes, it is Garage Band Weekly, episode uh, 92, not um, not 91. Uh, can you tell that I'm a little bit uh, <laughs> a little bit disorganised today? We've had a few technical issues leading up to this. We had some audio issues, and then we had some video issues. We had my second screen over here was not playing nicely, so I had to unplug and replug everything, which means uh, I just need to do a few quick tweaks here on the uh, on the webcam because it's looking all a little bit bright. I don't mind being a bit bright, but uh, there we go. That's that's a bit better. I don't want you distracted by the messy bedroom studio behind me. Hey, how you doing? Uh, this is Garage Man Weekly. On the show today, we'll be talking about the new stuff because this time last week, we didn't know about this stuff. We didn't know about new iPhones, new iPads, new Apple Watches, if you're interested in that. iOS 15 is just around the corner, which is a bit exciting. And uh, a friend of the show is about to celebrate a pretty massive milestone. So we're going to talk about all of those things right here. If you've got a question, however, uh, we've got plenty of time for Q&A because... Who knows if everything's actually going to work and stay together here today. So uh, if, if everything fails, I'll just sit back and, and we'll do Q&A for the next hour. Uh, we've also got a double header show here today. So straight after this one, you can uh, check out the other live show right here on the channel. Uh, that one is where we're going to hopefully old technology staying nice, it, we're going to actually look at the collaboration I'm working on at the moment in my song, Timber Song. So that is going to be a lot of fun because many of you, uh, I think more than 20 people have sent in backing tracks to sing the gang vocal on my song, Timber Song. I just pushed my Mac in and I lost the screen for a second. Everything's very, it's it's all held together with like sticky tape here at the moment. Uh, what, what do you call sticky tape in other parts of the world? Uh, seller tape? Uh, masking tape? Gaffer tape? I don't know. No. All right. Uh, let's get on with it, and uh, shall we, and see what is in the news. And unless you've been living under a rock, you probably are aware that we have some brand new gear that you can use for your garage banding. Goodness, including some new iPhone 13s. Now, uh, that's the pro, but we're here on Apple.com. Let's come over here and take a firstly a look at the iPhone 13. This is what it is. This is what it looks like. Lots of different colors. We've got the new diagonal camera so that, it, you know, you can show, you can flex on people if they've got the these stupid old vertical cameras that you can say, oh no, you've got last year's model. You need the iPhone 13 with its, with its uh, ver uh, horizontal. <laughs> <laughs> Diagonal cameras, uh, but yeah, they're very impressed. They're very happy with their uh, their new camera system. This is the thing that I think is actually the most interesting thing is the A15 Bionic chip. So this thing is going to fly along. Like if you're a GarageBand user, forget about it. You're going to be able to use GarageBand till the cows both figuratively and literally come home because yeah, 32 tracks of audio, uh, the A15 chip, but basically the A15 and the M1 or the A14 and A15 and the M1 and the M2 or M1X, whatever's coming next for Mac, they're basically the exact same architecture now. They're all the system on a chip. You've got your memory, you've got your graphics, you've got your processor, and they're all on that one chip. And the A15, despite the fact that no one's actually used it, I mean, Let's be honest, some, uh, Renee Ritchie's probably already got an iPhone 13 and is already using it, but uh, many, those that are under embargo aside, no one's actually publicly shown this apart from Apple yet. So it will be fascinating uh, in a few days' time. It's, it's coming out uh, very soon. People will have their hands and the embargoes will be lifted and we'll start seeing what is these are actually going to do, these new iPhones? Battery life is something that everyone, including myself with the iPhone 12, would be happy to hear is improving on the iPhone 13. And uh, there you go, available starting on the 24th, which uh, is only four days away for us here in the future. So the iPhone 13 is a thing, you can check it out. The iPhone 13 Pro, as per usual, there's not a huge difference between the 13 and the 13 Pro. Size-wise, you can get up to one gigabyte of storage on the 13 Pro, uh, whereas you can't on the 13. The only other real difference is around the camera system. Once again, you've got the three camera system. You've still got the A15 Bionic chip, and you've got that larger screen size with the 13 Pro Max that you can go for. So... To be honest, if you were gonna, if you really were gonna be a creator and you were gonna go the iPhone instead of the iPad, yeah, the Pro would probably be good. And the 6.7 inch screen means that things like GarageBand are gonna be a heck of a lot 
better. The, this was the one thing, macro video and macro camera. Like, look at that. That's pretty darn cool. So the ability to do macro photography and filmmaking is pretty good. And of course, you've got the ProMotion display, which we have on the iPad Pros. We've never had on the iPhone Pro. That's the 120 hertz display that is going to make things nice and smooth for you there. So uh, marginal differences. Here's why I'm excited. Because the iPad and the iPad mini, if you're not a pro user and you were just wanted to get something uh, budget entry level that's going to do the job, this new iPad is next level. Like this thing, the A13 Bionic chip. Now you might be saying, but Pete, the new ones have the A15, it's only the A13. Why would I get this over that? Well, here's the thing. You don't generally need it. You don't generally need anything like that. Uh, camera mic is on. Did I not check the thing? <laughs> Have I got the, uh, am I coming through my camera mic here? I am too. There you go. Thank you for that. Let's fix that and get better audio, shall we? In the one, two, three. There you go. I told you we were going to have some fun today. <laughs> there you go. Hopefully you could still hear me. But uh, yeah, that was the, that's an example. What I wanted to do there was give you an example of why the webcam microphones are never okay. So don't anyone ever use the webcam microphones. Yes, if, if that's on the gear guide, which it is, use the camera, but do not use that. So there, there you go. That was my um, that was my little test for you for the start of the show. That's a, that's an example of why when you're live streaming, you should always listen to your audience because otherwise you'll be stuck like that. It's all good. Uh, you, it, we're all just a work in progress, right? And uh, apparently this show and this channel also just a work in progress. Yeah, now I'm quieter. Now I'll, now I'll be at the actual proper volume as opposed to the weird echoing yelling that's coming through here. So uh, hopefully you, you have to turn it down just a little smidge, but uh, it'll sound better, I promise. All right, let's continue on, shall we? iPads, why am I excited about this? The iPad has the A13 Bionic chip. You get 64 gigabytes of storage at the base level. Now, that's exciting because it used to only be 32. 32 gigabytes, in my opinion, not enough for a creator. You're not going to be able to use that. And from $329 US, which means it's only, what, $499 or $549 Australian, it's a pretty good deal. So if you are a GarageBand creator or if you're using something like an iPad 2017 or the old iPad Air 2, even though they can technically run iOS 15, which is the next version of iOS, yeah, I wouldn't, uh, I, I would consider upgrading. And if you want the best budget upgrade, I would go for this. Now, nothing wrong with last year's model running the A12 with the 32 gigs of, of storage, especially if you can up it. So my daughter has the 128 gigabyte model of last year's. And here's the thing. The good news about new stuff, it's not just that you're going to be able to buy the new thing. But what happens all the time is that last year's model, suddenly you get a whole bunch of refurb ones because people like me go and trade their old ones in and get something new. So keep that in mind as well. But yeah, the, the new iPad, pretty darn cool. No, no, nothing revolutionary in terms of changes there. Slight upgrade to the camera, but the A13 chip is going to make things a lot better, a lot quicker for you and get your garage banding experience going well. And this was somewhat of a surprise. It wasn't really, but the iPad mini, more power, mini size from $4.99. So this thing is going to be a powerhouse. So this is amazing. Let's just jump into this. We'll learn more about the iPad mini. So there it is, more power mini size. Now what this is, you would have heard me talk about the iPad Air 4th gen in the past. The iPad Air 4th gen is the, the best value, best bang for buck iPad because it's way cheaper than a Pro, but you get a lot of the similar Pro features like the USB-C port and like the full screen edge-to-edge -edge kind of display with the bezels and the, the lack of the chin and the no button and all that sort of stuff, which is it a feature? I don't know. So here's what they did with the Mini. They basically took the iPad Air 4th generation, they stuck the A15 Bionic chip in it and they shrunk it down and made it at 8.3 inches. So this thing, I'm I'm tempted by this. I've I said this before, but I use my iPad Pro here in the studio. I got an 11 inch iPad Pro, probably should have got a 12.9 inch because I don't really take it anywhere. Even though it's portable and even though I got it to take places, I don't really take it anywhere. Having something like this to just throw in your bag, like anyone can just throw this thing in your bag and take it with you. And, you know, you can even get 5G on it if you wanted to, but you've got Apple Pencil support, uh, you've got the A15 processor, you've got that all-round screen design, and the size of this thing, even though it's a bit weird that we've got a phone that's 6.7 inches and then an iPad that's 8.3 inches, 
I think that there's still a place for it. Uh, the screen on this, it's the 8.3 inch liquid retina display, which is just like an LED display. Uh, they just like to, to give fancy names to things. And uh, support for the Apple Pencil too. So it'll have, it has the charging where you just attach to the side, which for anyone who's owned an Apple Pencil 1, yeah, no, not so good. Um, because you have to charge it over uh, lightning and it's just a pain in the butt. So I think, I think this thing, I think a lot of people will be jumping on board this thing. Uh, as creators and as mobile creators, I think the iPad mini could be something to check out. So there you go. You can go to apple.com. You can check out all the details there. You can also check out the other videos here on the channel. I did a three minute overview <laughs> of all the stuff and I did a, a long deep dive live stream the day of the announcement. So we'll have more on that next week. One once we know on the 24th what's actually happening with these. Speaking of the 24th, the other news is that we will have iOS 15 and iPad OS 15. Now, this feels, does anyone else feel like this has been the longest lead in to a new OS update ever? <laughs> it seems to have taken forever because there's been so many beta versions and release candidates and public betas and private betas and all the rest of the stuff that I've lost interest to the point where I was, I was preparing for this and I'm like, what new features do we have again? Like we got the preview of iOS 15 so long ago, I've actually forgotten and lost interest in any of the features. Because I remember thinking at the time, there's really nothing here new that I'm that excited about. And that hasn't changed. There's nothing, there's a few things. Oh, that's right. The one thing I was, uh, I'm looking forward to is the Files app. So I've been using the Files app in iOS a lot this week because I'm doing this collaboration project that we'll talk about in a moment where I'm actually bringing files in and moving files around within iOS and the ability to actually have better drag and drop file management capability, that is going to be a bit of a game changer because if you've used the Files app, you know that you kind of have to hit the select button and do things individually and move things around. So that's kind of the one change I think would be cool. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I keep, I keep predicting this. I keep predicting that, because in iOS 13, GarageBand released this tiny little update and all they changed was USB file support and the dark mode, and that was it. So I've just got this fantasy that GarageBand iOS is going to give us a master volume track and the ability to turn off auto limiting and auto normalization. I don't know why, I just, I've just got this vibe that there'll be this tiny dot update. It won't be a massive update, but we'll get that one. So maybe. Uh, when is iOS 15 coming out? Yeah, good question. So it, it, I'm, I'm assuming it'll drop to all devices on the same day, the 24th of, of uh, September, because that's the day that all of the new iOS devices become available. So, uh, and by the way, uh, as Jade Starr alluded to, uh, she let me know about this. Please make sure that you go in and uh, you've updated. So go into your, your settings here in the iPhone, go to general, and then up the top, go to, you can't see that because it's all blanked out because of the white balance, but go to software update and make sure that you have the latest version of iOS 14.8. Is it just 14.8 or 14.8.1? There was a critical um, security update in that one. So you do want to make sure that you've got the latest version. If not, uh, jump in there and check it out. Yeah, iOS out the end of this week. So we should start seeing it dropping in. And let's say, um, oh yeah, sorry, and the, the new function that might make you, yeah, exactly. So the new function, so iOS 15 and the new macOS update will actually allow you to AirPlay directly from your iPhone or iPad directly into a Mac. So instead of having to run third-party software or use QuickTime or use an HDMI capture device like a lot of us do, you'll be able to simply grab your iPhone or iPad and reflect, so AirPlay it directly to your screen. Now, how is that going to work in terms of latency of audio? That's something that I'll have to test. And of course, I'll be testing that out here, but that could be a big thing, especially if, say, you're using a smaller iPhone and you want to throw your GarageBand screen up onto your Mac display. That could be kind of cool. There's the ability to use a mouse and a keyboard on your iPhone, which you can already do just via Bluetooth or USB, and then throw that up on your Mac screen. You can have your, your iPhone on like a 24 or 27 inch screen. That could be kind of fun, I reckon. Uh, and as Thomas says, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely update to the newest version. Really significant security update. Yes, don't, don't come to us in a week's time crying because your iCloud drive was hacked and all your baby photos were deleted because you didn't do the security update. And I, I'll say that, and then I'll say, for the iOS 15 stuff, don't update to iOS 15 if you are in the middle of a critical project on your iOS device. Let's pause and let's say that again. And everyone say it with me. Do not update 
to iOS 15 if you are right in the middle of a critical thing. For instance, if you're in the middle of your Songtember song, the last thing you want to do on the 24th of Songtember is update to a brand new iOS version. Just cool your jets. It'll still be there in a week's time. It's not a security update. It's just a feature update. There's not any features there that are game changers. So I'm telling you, do as I will do. I will not be updating my iPad. I'll be updating my iPhone and my other iPad so that I can start checking out the features and, and letting you know what's available there and testing things. My iPad Pro, the one sitting here that I'm doing my song Temper song on, will not be getting updated until it absolutely needs to be, which will be on the 1st of October once everything is done and we are uh, finished with song Temper. All right. So, uh, hello to the folks who are here live, by the way, and thank you. I apologize for ignoring you at the start when I was on the camera audio. It was, yeah, an unfortunate thing that I lost the one screen and that I had to unplug and replug and that reset the audio settings here in, uh, in StreamYard. Just a thing that happens from time to time. Don't worry. Uh, so hello to the folks. We've got James Hanks here, Gregory O'Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs that song, Temper Song, anyway? Hello to Joe Glenn, hello Deep Gravity, hello Brad Examples here, Patrick Chandler, Mark Bro, Joe Glenn, and Thomas Christ. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Jade Starr, I saw him earlier. Um, if you do have questions, as we've always said, questions, comments, or anything else, just throw them right there. And uh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, because I got really distracted at the start there, uh, don't forget that my GarageBand Beginner's Guide is available right there, studiolivetoday.com slash courses. Our man, Russ8889, has been using it and learning GarageBand, and hopefully that's going well. You'll, you'll see the fruits of Russ's work very soon when he completes his song, Timber song, his first ever song in GarageBand, which should be cool. So there you go, $10, and uh, you can grab that course over there, Studio... I should probably show you, hey. If you go to studiolivetoday.com slash courses... Here we go. This is what you'll get. It'll look like this, and you'll get to jump in there. There it is, the GarageBand iOS Beginner's Guide. It is just $10, and it is a five hours of curated content from the channel here. It's all fully transcribed. It's all fully searchable, and you even get a little access box there where you can type a message. And if, if the course doesn't answer the question, you get to come through and ask me. So I, uh, and I check that mailbox every day. So if you do have questions, you get the ability to tap into my brain. And I am working on the advanced version of that. For those that have been waiting and asking, yes, the advanced course is in the works. I know I've been saying that for around about six months, but <laughs> we are working on it now. Once Songtember is done, we should be able to get that one up and then available, which should be very cool. So uh, thank you to those who've already purchased. Thank you for all of your support. All right, uh, let's move on and uh, talk about our next, 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 next topic. All right, we've talked, uh, uh, ah, yes, there was one more thing I wanted to talk about, and this is this is pretty darn exciting. I'm, I'm stoked for this. So you may know that uh, if you're looking for GarageBand stuff, like, yes, I cover GarageBand an awful lot, but there's, there's one bloke who, who literally wrote the guide on GarageBand. That's the way I always introduce him. And of course, it's our friend Patrick at the Garage Band Guide. And uh, Patrick's about to hit a pretty important milestone. And that is that he's uh, just 900 subscribers away from 100,000 subscribers. So can we get a, a preemptive round of applause here? Because uh, Patrick is the OG. He's been working on this stuff. Let's, let's flip his videos around. Let's sort them by oldest. Where, where did Patrick do his very first video about GarageBand? There you go. Eight years ago, the GarageBand compressor in action. I won't play it because that might embarrass you. Oh, shall I play it? Let me know. Just say, just say, yes, play it. It's, it's there. It's a public video. I'm not doing anything wrong. But uh, yeah, it, it would be, might be, I'm just going to do it. So Patrick's been making videos for eight years since he did ones like this. Right? How good's that? His very first video starts with banjo. And I'm not sure he even talks in it. I'm pretty sure he uses uh, he uses just these pop-ups. So yeah, go back. So February 19, 2013. So Patrick has been grinding it out for uh, for a very long time. Here, let's give this one a like. I don't think I've ever watched that video. By the way, that's a just, just so that um, just so that we're fair here. Uh, let's just go to, to to my channel and do exactly the same thing. Because uh, the, the, the only way to be fair is to do this. Is actually fun. Uh, if you, if you, there's YouTubers that you like, go to their go to their page, go to the videos tab, go sort by, and go date oldest. And here you go. Let's let's take a look at my first video from five years ago. See, I had a I had this terrible, uh, very iMovie intro. 
Now let's see the quality of this one. Hey there, Pete Johns here from Studio Live today, and I wanted to take you through a <laughs> the old iPhone five with the dented cabinet, like the desktop there. So yeah, so hopefully that that evens out the score. But uh, yeah, uh, Patrick has been doing uh, doing this stuff for a long time, and he was definitely one of the folks who inspired me. So when I started this channel six years ago, I was looking for GarageBand iOS content. And Patrick, at that point, he was doing some iOS, but it was the majority of stuff was Mac. So I'm like, oh, this would be really great, but I don't have a Mac. I want to learn iOS. I uh, looked at a few of Patrick's videos that he'd started doing at that time and then went, I want, to, I want to deep dive into this stuff. So that's where I started looking at music memos, like that first video, started looking at GarageBand iOS and just went, yep, this is for me. I'm going to go all in and we're going to do, and that's when I recorded my first EP in GarageBand on my iPhone, iPhone 6S back in the day, and then uh, the rest is history. So I wanted to say that and uh, I've already reached out to Patrick and said uh, to said to Patrick, once you hit that milestone, I, I don't care, because the problem is it's midnight for Patrick in the UK at the moment. So in the summertime in the US, in the UK, it's hard for him to get on this show. So I said, I will change. I will get up at four in the morning if we need to, but we will have Patrick on the show to celebrate once he hits that 100,000. And of course, if for the for the you know one percent of people who may not already be subscribed to Patrick, jump over and do it because he's sharing a lot of great videos, and you will definitely not regret it. Uh, I saw a question there. Where did uh, where did your theme music come from? So I actually wrote that. One of the first things I wrote in GarageBand was that theme song. So uh, it, it it was this this song here was the old garage uh, the old Studio Live Today theme. And uh, if you if you watch one of my pre-recorded videos now, it actually has a little component of that. In fact, I can play this bit for you here now. It just does the little da da da. I'll just come in here to the uh, the videos that I've got stored here. So this is the the little intro video, um, and this is what it yeah, sounds like. Oh, I'm still talking. This is what it sounds like uh, now when you watch a video. <laughs> So it's uh it's slightly sped up, and then the version that's on most just goes da na na, which I think is this one. Yep, that one. So <coughs> sorry, getting a bit off track there. But yeah, so uh, so congratulations. And there you go. There is the Garage Band guide on YouTube. Thank you, Thomas Christ, for throwing that. And yeah, look at that. The old version of GarageBand Mac, yeah, it was looking was looking very old school, wasn't it? Even eight years ago, that was uh, that was interesting. Uh, I've got a question here from Andrew Graham, who asks: Are the loops recorded with real instruments? Interesting question. Yes and no. So in GarageBand, the loops are depends on the type of loop. So there are two types of loops, and I'm going to have to do it anyway, eventually anyway. So let's tempt fate here with this janky uh, technology setup that we've got going on here today and share uh, share my GarageBand screen over here using Reflector. While we still have to, let's use, uh, let's use Reflector, and I'll just load up my GarageBand project and make sure that that's loaded. And then we'll go here and we'll hit the screen mirroring. Uh, thanks for hanging with me here today. I know it's been a bit of a schnizzle show, but we'll uh, we'll get there. It's the joy of live, isn't it? All right, so we have this up here on our screen. I'll bring you on over and I'll just show you a couple of things about loops in GarageBand here. I'm just going to plug in to my audio. So because at the moment it, you would have seen the pop up there. This is using um, using AirPlay. That's going to have a lot of latency and we don't want that. So we'll actually plug in here and we should now have this coming through our audio which, there we go, audio device connected, turn on the monitoring. Yeah, not everything. There's our work in progress, which is a work in progress. Uh, so in terms of loops, what we can do is if we come up to the top here, th there's two types of Apple loops. In fact, there's three. So anything that is a blue loop like this, this is using audio recorder. So for instance, if we came in here and we went to, uh, let's just go to Apple loops, we'll X out of that, we'll filter by our sound packs, and we'll go in and we'll check out the Mark Letary sound pack, shall we? Because this one, I know for a fact, Mark actually used some actual guitars to record this. So if we go to the Mark Letary pack and all loops and back out to here, there you go. So if we take a listen to one of these, that's Mark and his actual guitar. Yeah, he's using some effects and some processing, but that's his actual guitar in these loops here, as opposed to any of the green loops that you may see in here. So if we just uh, if we come in here and we reset the filter, any of these green loops, these are actually MIDI loops. So, 
So these are actually using the virtual instruments in there. And then there's some that are actually using a virtual instrument, but are looking as a, an actual um, blue loop here. So it really depends. But the way to think about it is any of your green loops, these are ones that if you bring them into your track, we'll just come down here. I shouldn't be doing this in my actual current track. But if we bring in a track like that, then you can see there that it's completely editable. It's using virtual instruments if it's your green loop. If we do something like this and we grab a blue loop, then you can see here that it's actually an audio waveform. So that's the main difference between the two types of loops here in GarageBand. There is a third type of loops, which is your drummer loops. Can we find one real quick? These, there we are. So these are the yellow loops. So these ones create a drummer track when we bring them in. Uh, will it let us? Yep, there it goes. So yeah, there you go. There's, there's Anders doing his drumming. So yeah, so it really depends. Some of them are recorded with real instruments, especially on the sort of the producer packs, but uh, some of them are virtual instruments in Apple Loops, and some of them are virtual instruments entirely like your green Apple Loops. So hopefully that helped answer your question there. Uh, I'm blind, so I wouldn't see the difference. Yeah, so I don't know if with the voiceover, it actually show it tells you if it's a MIDI loop or a regular loop. Once you put it onto the track and then you tap on it, it'll then tell you the difference because it'll have different options for your MIDI loops, for your virtual instruments, than it will for your blue loops, your um, your audio loops. So yeah, and I know that there's a lot of people, um, there's a lot of people who are are vision impaired and use GarageBand. So uh, it's probably a question. And if you, if you are on Facebook, join the Facebook, uh, uh, the GarageBand users Facebook group is a good place to go. Or just ask a question in the comments here because I know we've got folks like Carlito, we've got Melissa, we've got Asa, we've got a bunch of folks who are vision impaired who absolutely crushed in GarageBand. I'm always astounded and impressed at how they do that. So there you go. Uh, question for Pete, did you see me time stretch drums today in GarageBand iOS using Neon? It's easy and amazing. You may want to pay attention to it. I may, indeed. So I don't, I didn't. But um, yeah, if, if there's anything, uh, if there's anything that can help do is time stretching in GarageBand, because at the moment, the method that I use, so you may be aware that if you use an Apple loop, let's get out of, let's get out of my actual working project, shall we? <laughs> let's just come in here and create a new track so I can show some of this. So if we come in here, we'll just go to audio recorder. I've also left my mouse in the other room, so I'm super organized today, aren't I? We'll go back to here. So if we go into the loops, and let's just say we add in, uh, yeah, let's just add in one of my favorite loops. Where are we going? We'll add in the 70s rock piano, Latin rock piano as a MIDI loop. And then we'll add in, uh, let's just go with the 70s electric piano. Will these, will these line up together? Will these be in the same key? Let's find out. No, not even a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> let's grab a drum loop because we're talking drums. Let's grab a drum loop and use that instead. So let's just go with something that's not going to work, but we'll do it anyway. The 60s shuffle drum set. Because I think everyone's heard this because it's the very first loop because it's called the 60s shuffle drum set. And take a listen. So it doesn't work at all, yeah? And what you'll know if you've used these loops before is that the Apple loops are designed in such a way that you can actually time stretch them. So if I came in here and I wanted to speed up this project from 110 uh, to say 136, you'll see there that it actually speeds up all these loops. So that's kind of cool. And you can actually move things around there and actually change the speed based on, and you can come in and change it, the follow tempo and pitch. So you can not only, not only stretch for the tempo, but it'll stretch for the pitch with these. So if we come in here and we change this from C major to B flat, you'll hear that it'll be different. Sounds like a really bad theme for a 70s TV show, doesn't it, at this point? Uh, so, But the problem here is, if I bring in my own audio file instead, which, uh, let's just, oh, look, you can see all the all the audio files I'm bringing in here of other people. So uh, I, I want to bring in one of mine. So I'm not showing anyone else's stuff, but I can't remember. There it is. So if I bring in, say, my backing track for work in progress here, and we'll just solo this one and play it, the, the problem we have... <laughs> Because we're all just so is that if we have any audio file that we've brought in ourselves, there's no way to adjust this because it's a static audio file. So what Jade is saying is that uh, there is a plugin or there is a, a, an AUV3 by the sounds of it uh, called Neon that can actually do this, that we can actually have the ability to control speed in GarageBand because the only other way that I've found to do this is to use an app called Audio Stretch. So if we come out here and we search Audio Stretch, uh, this one here, audio stretch. So we've we've played around with this before. <laughs> 
So you can see here I've sped up this guitar tone and you can actually adjust the speed and you can even adjust the pitch by a number of semitones. And... But it's kind of clunky. You have to know like what, what times, what percentages, and uh, you can only do the pitch by semitones. So it's not ideal. So yeah, we're, the, the Holy Grail has been away. A couple of things that we want to do in GarageBand, export our MIDI <laughs> and uh, do time stretching and time shifting and, and potentially pitch shifting. But uh, yeah, so, so what Jade's saying is that you can do speed and pitch in a track, which would be kind of epic. I need, to, I need to watch that one and learn how you do that. So Jade, drop a link to the video where you showed that one. So anyone who missed it can go and check it out because uh like i say that is kind of the holy grail of of this sort of stuff that we haven't been able to do till now all right uh now i've kind of flipped around the order here because our feature topic today was a deep dive into the new iphones and ipads i kind of got completely <laughs> i got completely sidetracked and already did that uh, in in the intro so we won't talk too much about that uh, but let's just jump back over for just a moment because i've got uh, i've got a couple of things that are going to help you out here and i'm about to update these once we have all the full specs and because here's the thing i uh, apple don't release a lot of this stuff straight away and some of the stuff like the details around the memory and some of the other things we don't really know until people actually get their hands physically on the stuff because apple they release a lot of stuff they say the words like liquid retina display yet they often won't tell you how many gigabytes of ram are actually in a device because in their opinion it doesn't matter that's not the important selling point so but what i do have is my ipad buyer's guide over here so if you go to studiolivetoday.com slash ipad and you can see here that my recommendations haven't been updated for a while because I haven't updated them since September 2020, because they haven't really changed, although they should have, because uh, I've, I've still got the iPad Pro 2020 fourth gen. The iPad Pro 2021 fifth gen should actually be in there. So I'll be updating these soon. Still pretty relevant, though, for, for a lot of these recommendations, but with the new stable of iPads coming in, I'll be changing this around a little bit. And uh, I'll also be updating this, because this is the iPad comparison chart. And uh, this is really handy if you are shopping for a new, but especially a secondhand iPad, you can come in here and check this one out. You can see every iPad ever made. You can see like the serial numbers of them. So this is the sort of stuff that it takes a while to get together. So once all of that new stuff has been released, I'll be updating this guide and you'll be able to jump on in and check that one out. You can also go to studiolivetoday.com slash iPhone. I'll just grab this one here. And we have basically the same thing. So I'm going to be a busy person this week because uh, not only do I have to do fun stuff like my income tax, I also have to update my two guides here. So the iPhone buyer's guide uh, and uh, the, the top video there is why I bought the iPad uh, iPhone 12 Pro in February of this year. So was I a crazy, crazy cracker for buying the 12? when the 13 was coming out? No, because guess what? Something's always coming out. <laughs> and unless you're going to buy it on launch day and then just throw it away and buy the next one on the next launch day, you're going to be living in a in, in bad times. So I don't know. Uh, I am live again in 30 minutes. Thank you for the reminder, Deep Gravity. Yes, so I'm live again in 30 minutes and I'll be showing something. Let's let's give you a sneak preview, shall we, before we go on a bit of a rant here, uh, because we've got, a, we've got a shorter show here. But we'll go on a sneak preview here, uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat here because I normally do a plugin or app of the week. But what I'm gonna tell you to do is for the plugin or app of the week, uh, go over to Jade Star's channel and uh, check out the Four Pockets Neon <laughs> because it sounds like it's pretty cool. Uh, let, let's have a look. Actually, let's have a look in the App Store. We're changing the order of everything here today. I just I just don't care. We're just going hard. Uh, so Neon Four Pockets. Let's find it. Can't spell but that's all right. Does anyone ever just not spell things correctly in Google and then just press enter anyway and just see just see how close it gets when you search it? Uh, I do. My wife gets really annoyed because I get things wrong. So here it is in the Apple store. This is the US store. So I'm assuming this is US prices, $9.99. And it's the Neon Audio Editor here. And uh, I think from what Jay was telling me, it's like, well, here it says, Neon is a lightweight digital audio editor and recording plugin compatible with any AUV3 host. It supports major iOS file formats, allows simple drag and drop between plugins. The editor allows you to import audio from a file or system clipboard, as well as the ability to record incoming audio. So, and look, at a glance, you'd be like, why do I need an audio recorder inside an app it, like inside a plugin, inside an audio recorder app. That doesn't seem to make a lot of sense, but maybe it does. Looks like it's designed for iPads, so it may not be universal. 
that's cool. Just something to keep in mind, though. And it looks like it's 10 bucks, which means with the, uh, the, the Australia tax and the Australia dollar tax, it's probably $16.99, I would imagine. Jay, correct me if I'm wrong on that one. But yeah, I'd imagine it would be that. In fact, I'll go, I'll go here on my phone to the App Store and we'll search it out and we'll find it. So what are we looking at? Four pockets four pickets <laughs> close enough four pockets neon and then i'll give you and so it'll be 9.99 probably be nine pounds 99 as well oh I'm, I'm a, what did i just say what did i just say i just said it's an ipad only app and now i'm searching it on my iphone how about we jump here into the ipad and search it out app store and we have to type it again now <laughs> that's never fun four pockets neon just so that we can get there uh no nope, not procreate i already own that four pockets neon Oh, it's, look, it's not coming up. There it is. Neon Audio Editor. $14.99. There you go. $14.99 Australian. $9.99 US. And I'm sure probably $9.99 also in the UK in great British pounds. Or at least decent British pounds. I mean, don't, let's not have tickets on ourselves. They're not great British pounds. They're just good. Good British pounds. Let's call them that. Uh, hello to the Mix Club. Hello to uh, Desla Morning. Hello to anyone else who has uh, jumped in here. Uh, do Apple cards expire? As in Apple app stores? Oh, and it is universal. Well, there you go. <laughs> so I said designed for iPad there, uh, but it is universal. That's cool. Uh, I couldn't find it on my iPhone, but I'll, uh, I'll definitely have to check it out. Uh, do Apple cards expire? They definitely used to. There's some changes to laws here in Australia in particular, where I think any gift cards have to have a minimum of three years now or be infinite. So I think there was some there was some dodginess going on where cards were only 12 months at one point, and if you didn't use them in the expiry date, they basically turned into um, a potato. So I'm not sure what it's like in other parts of the world, but I would, yeah, I, I would check. I, I've never had one expire, but then again, whenever I get an Apple card for, say, iTunes, I just redeem it immediately. And that's a good habit to get into. So if, if anyone ever gives you a gift card uh, that's a digital gift card, just go into your go into your app store, go down to redeem and scan the code and redeem it instantly. That way it's in your account. You might as well have those, those credits, those dollars or pounds or euros in your account as opposed to sitting on a card that you may lose, that may expire, that may cause problems. So do that. And you don't want, to, you don't want nefarious hackers going in and hacking your codes either. There you go. Uh, yeah, I bought one and forgot about it. Well, go on. actually, I say all that. I think I've got one in a tin that I got for my birthday last year. So I better go and check that straight away. Uh, do you know if the I, IMPC app and the Focusrite iTrack dock will still be compatible with it? With iOS 15, so there's no significant compatibility changes with iOS 15. One of the questions I've had recently that Apple haven't talked about and no one in the community has actually freaked out about, and if it was going to happen, they would have, is the depre deprecation of audio units. No, other one. Interap Audio. Thank you. Uh, the deprecation of Interap Audio. So way, way back, I think it was either 13, might have been into 14, but a couple of years ago, Apple in their developer notes said, developers of audio apps, please start using Audio Unit V3 as opposed to Interap Audio. So if you don't know the difference, they're just the two different types, the two different ways that you can communicate it within an app with audio. So they said, please stop using Interap Audio. Please start using AUV3 because we will be deprecating, which basically means no longer supporting, no longer providing functionality to Interap Audio plugins. But AUV3, audio unit is the future. So that's that's the only thing that's on the horizon. And look, most developers now have started working through that and have started doing it. A lot haven't, like some of the, the guitar amp folks, like uh, the Amplitubes and the, the Biases and the, those sort of apps are still using Interapp. But eventually, it'll hit a point where they're just going to have to. And everyone will throw their hands up and the developers will blame Apple and Apple will blame the developers and it'll all be a bit of a schnizzle show. But... That aside, I don't think that there's any other major changes. Look, never say never, because was it iOS 13 that bricked a bunch of, uh, what was the ones, the, not Laney, what, who am I thinking of? There was, there was a whole, uh, I don't use them, but there's a whole type of interface that basically worked perfectly in iOS 12, and then iOS 13 came along, and it would just not talk to it. It just seemed to brick them all. And at that point, that manufacturer was blaming Apple. Apple was just saying, no, 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 we gave you the pre-release, you just didn't test it, and you need to change your hardware somehow. Eventually, they got a firmware update, and eventually it all worked. But yeah, that's, uh, that's where it's at with that. So no, I, I don't imagine that there'll be significant changes, uh, but yeah, there may be. 
uh, you're welcome. No problem. Uh, and if anyone else has any questions, we've got a couple more things to talk about, but just put the word question in the start of your comment and we will uh, endeavor to answer any of your questions. I'm going to come out. I'm just going to delete that uh, test file that we just did then because I always, I always forget to do that and then it, everything gets super duper cluttered and it's no fun. All right, I'm going to have a quick coffee break and then we'll bring up, we'll come back over here. Cold. By the way, Thriving Creator Podcast, Sarah Newen, our friend over there at uh, Sarah Newen Online, uh, she sent me this one when I was on her podcast. So cheers to you, Sarah. And speaking of podcasts, I was on the, or I've recorded, uh, <laughs> there you go, Reflector's gone away. I kind of knew it would. We'll, uh, we'll just re reshare this. So I was on um, John Kell's podcast that he does, which is called... Uh, Oh, it was still sharing. <laughs> it's all gone. It's all gone a bit weird here today. I'll just unshare and then reshare my screen and we'll get back to... We'll get back to business. Reshare, please. Um, I was on John Kell's Song Surfing podcast this week, which was a lot of fun. So uh, that will be being released pretty soon. So make sure that you go to songsurfingpodcast.com and make sure that you're subscribed to John. He does amazing work over there at his podcast, Song Surfing, where he uh, plays a lot of indie music. And a lot of uh, folks in the community here, uh, so Derek Smith, Glenn Clark, John Silvers, those folks have all already been guests when he does his Song Surfing with Friends. And let's just let the cat out of the bag right now. Two amazing garage band creators are who I chose to be the special musical guest that I played on the show. So what uh, what John does is he plays one song by the, the artist that's on the show, which was me. I played my song New Beginning, which is last year's song, Temper Song. I thought that was fitting. And then uh, we played a Thomas Christ tune and a Gary Hubs tune. So there you go. Yes, two people that I know many of you here in the community will know and two people that I think just needed to uh, to to get, get some credit and get a little bit of exposure out there because they both do amazing work and more importantly, they're both awesome humans. Uh, yep, this guy right here. Uh, yeah, Apple hasn't really mentioned IAA deprecation recently. I wonder if they haven't backed away. Ooh. So what, <laughs> what Apple would probably do if they did back away is exactly what they're doing, which is just go silent and never mention it again. So they've pr potentially, what could, what could sometimes happen is that they get so much backlash, but they don't want to admit that it was a bad idea to begin with. So they'll just bury it and not mention it again. And then it'll just keep going and everyone will just not talk about it like it's the elephant in the room. There you go. Uh, Russ Johns. Yeah, totally, Russ. Uh, hit me up um, because Russ Johns, Russ Johns is a member of the StreamYard community. I see him in a lot of the StreamYard town halls. So I'll probably see you later on today on the StreamYard town hall, Russ. And uh, obviously he, he, he took my fancy because not only does he have a, an epic beard, you know, bearded dudes are always the, the coolest dudes. That's what I say. But um, yeah, he has the same surname. So we're probably distant, long lost seventh cousins or something, Russ. So yeah, hit me up, uh, Pete at studiolivetoday.com. I would be happy to come on your podcast my friend. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look and a listen at this because this is my project, my current project called Work in Progress. And many of you know it because <laughs> you've been hearing it for the last three weeks. So uh, if you're not familiar, it sounds like this. We're all just a work in progress. Nobody's got it figured out. Yes, we're all just a work in progress. Nobody's got it. Nobody's got it figured out. And there you go. Now you'll have that in, the head, in your head for the rest of the day, even if you leave right now. So where are we at with this? Well, we're nearly finished. We're close to a final mix on this, which is important because we need to get the final mix done this week and get our mastering done and get it out to DistroKid. So I've given myself a deadline of Friday the 25th to uh, submit it to DistroKid. So we got five freaking days to get everything done. And because there's something about Song Temper that makes all of us bite off more than we can chew sometimes. I know that Jade's doing multiple songs. Thomas is doing multiple songs. I know a lot of folks who are doing more than one Song Temper song. So what I need to do is get my butt to gear because on the on a, on a previous episode, I'm like, hey, wouldn't it be good? These gang vocals here at the end that I do that go through this last section a little bit like this. We're all just a work in progress. Wouldn't it be cool if we got the whole community to sing along with those. So that's exactly what we did. And I showed this in previous videos, but I'll show a, a really quick view of how we go about doing this because it was actually pretty easy to do in the end. I, I was worried that I would have files going everywhere and flying all over the place, but I'll show you a quick version of exactly how this all works. So when I did this before, 
you would be aware, we'll jump out of here, I'll take you into our other project and give you a sneak peek. So here is the work in progress gang vocal project. Yeah, right? You'll see some familiar names there because we got a bunch of people that created all of their different gang vocals and look at how cool that is, right? Everyone's involved. So we've got all of our gang vocals in there. I won't play this for you right now because you have to hang around to the next show to hear it. Yeah, there you go. That's a, that's, that's a bit of a tease. So what, what I did here is I sent you all this file as a wave file. Because we're all just a work in progress. Nobody's got it figured out. So I sent you that as one wave file, and then I sent you these as a separate wave file, which is the gang vocal that I was asking you to sing along with, which sounded like this. We're all just a work in progress. And so what I've done here now, and the reason I'm in this separate project, is as you can see, we have 30 of these. <laughs> And uh, I've mixed them all together. Again, I'm not going to spoil it. You have to watch the next show. Y yeah, you need to come in here and uh, and take a listen to it on the next live stream, which is happening in uh, 15 minutes. So you don't have long to wait. Uh, so what I did with this is I've got this separate project here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix these separately here and then export them as a WAV file and bring them back in as one stereo file into my other project because otherwise we're going to go well and truly above the 32 tracks. So we need to actually do this here. Now, how did I go about doing this? Well, take a look up here. What you'll see is that in my GarageBand file transfer folder, I have all of these files. So these are all the files that I downloaded from Kim Harden Hudson, from Papa Tom, from uh, Jade, from Dr. Zorders. A lot of people that you'll be familiar with here in the community, they all shared their vocals in here. We brought them all here into this track and then it will be good to go. So what I had to actually do here is firstly grab their email. So the way I work this is I uploaded those two way files to Google Drive and then I sent a link out. Anyone could then jump into Google Drive and download those files. Now, the key to using Google Drive or using Dropbox or using iCloud Drive is you always want to be copying the link and opening it in Safari. So this is the key and this is what I wanted to show you here today. So I've just gone away from there so I can go to my email just so that I'm not gonna be showing anything that can't be shown here. So we'll jump into one of our wonderful contributors. Let's use uh, Night Train, Night Train in 1988 who did send me a work in progress gang vocal. I'll just make sure it's not gonna show their email address there which it doesn't look like. It's got my email address, Pete at studiolivetoday.com, but no, it doesn't have Night Train's email address there, which is good. Just wanted to be sure of that. So here's what you need to do is you can see here that Al's done a great job here, looking forward to the final version, and you'll see it's got this link here, drive.google.com. Now, if that's a Dropbox drive link or if that's an iCloud drive link, it's the exact same process. What you want to do, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> getting all choked up, is tap and hold on that link, right? And when it gets to this part, you want to tap on this one, copy link. Don't do any of this business, just copy the link. Because if you try to open it, it might open it in a different browser, it might open it into your files app, it might open it in the Google Drive app. All of those things are okay, but they don't work as well as opening it in Safari. So what I'll do is I'll jump over here and we'll go to Safari again, just to make sure that I don't have anything open here that's uh, nefarious. No, we don't. All you're going to see here is a whole buttload of tabs that I've already gone to. So what do we want to do here? We just want to tap in the top section here. And I'm just going to tap again and tap paste and then hit enter. And it's going to take me to Google Drive. So here it is. Here is Al's vocal. I won't uh, play it here. We will in the next stream. We'll be playing all these because people sent these to me to use. So we'll be playing them. So uh, we'll play that Al's vocal in the next one. But all you then need to do is hit the download button. Now, Google Drive just has a download button here that we just tap on there. And what it will do, it'll bring up this screen here. This is your download map manager here in Safari. You want to hit the download button and up the top here, what it's doing, it's going to download these. Now you can see in my downloads folder, I had all of these that I downloaded directly into my downloads folder. The next step here is to go over to your files app. So we're going to go over to files and what I've actually done, I've already done this, but what you want to do is you want to grab anything from your downloads folder. So this is where the new iOS 15 stuff where you can actually tap and drag a box over things is going to help because I could have just dragged a box over and dragged them straight over to my folder. But what I actually had to do was tap on each of these and tap each vocal. So go, yep, there's Night Train, there's Maffy's Garden, uh, there, I can't remember, I can't see that one, Laurie Jude, all these folks that contributed and then move them. 
So hit the move button down here. Whoop, where is it? There it is. Move and move them and put them here in the GarageBand trial file transfer folder. So hit the copy button there and that copies them over. Your GarageBand file transfer folder is under on my iPad, GarageBand for iOS, GarageBand file transfer. And here they all are. So that's all of these all of these files that I have there. They're in the GarageBand file transfer folder and they're ready to go for us to come back over here to GarageBand and then go to our little loop icon here and drag them straight in. So here's Mark Kronk Song Lovells. No, that's it. that's his theme. That's the wrong one. He did do one. Uh, here's Arnie G. So we can grab Arnie G and we can throw Arnie G <laughs> into the project, uh, except uh, we, we, we've run out of tracks. So if we hadn't run out of tracks, we could have thrown Arnie G's track and it would have popped up just like all of these have done here, which I think is pretty cool. And when you hear this, you're going to just be blown away by how cool it sounds. Like I need to do a lot of mixing and some, some work on this, which you're going to see in just a few moments. But uh, yeah, that's uh, it's pretty cool and uh, will be coming along well. So that is that is what we're doing with the collaboration. And it's really, really simple to do. So there's there's the key. If you if you wanted the the Cliff Notes version of that, if you are collaborating, use WAV files. Use 24-bit 44.1 kilohertz WAV files. Try not to share compressed files if you possibly can. The better quality, the better. And when you're sharing, upload to somewhere like Google Drive or Dropbox or iCloud Drive, some sort of cloud storage platform, and then send that link via email. That way, all the person at the other end has to do is throw that link into Safari, hit the download button, and it will go straight into their files in the downloads folder where you can do with it as you please. So there you go. Didn't know that you could run out of tracks. Yeah, 32 tracks is your maximum in, in GarageBand, which is why, again, what I've done here, because I'm already at 30 tracks in my project, I've only got room for two more tracks. <laughs> so with, with all of Jade Star's epic drums, with all the backing vocals and all the instruments I already have, we've only got two tracks left. So what have I had to do? I've had to create this second project out here. And yes, iOS only. Good point, Peter. Um, I, I, and Thomas, iOS has the 32 tracks. You can go infinite up to your processing power. On a, on a Mac. Uh, but the reason I did this is that, yeah, obviously there's a lot, a lot of tracks here. So we're going to mix these down and then export these all as a wave file, nice stereo wave, slot them back in to our original, whoop, didn't mean to do that. There you go. <laughs> so it contains a maximum number of tracks. So yeah, I've got 32 tracks there. I've got 30 tracks here. So technically, this is going to be the largest amount of tracks I've ever had in any song. We're at 62 tracks here, people. <laughs> with all of those uh, vocals. And I've got, a, I've got a bit of an idea that we're going to experiment with in the next video. So uh, do hang around for that. Speaking of the next video, uh, I do invite you to come on over and uh, check out the next video. We'll, uh, we'll show you where it's at. It is over here. Uh, if you go to youtube.com and I'll throw it right here in the chat and that way you'll be able to, uh, to join me straight after this show. I'm just going to find my next one. Sorry, bear with me a moment. Your call is important to us and we'll be with you. The first available operator will be available to take your call. I don't know why I always do that in American accent. <laughs> uh, so the next one is uh, our collaboration video. So I'm going to throw this right here in the chat here. So if you're in the chat, we're going to finish here in about two minutes and uh, you can jump on over to that video. It'll also take you straight there through the magical power of YouTube live streaming. If you're on YouTube, it'll dump you straight there after this one. So just hang out there in the chat. I'm going to go for five minutes and then come on back. And if you're watching on the replay, it'll be down in the description. So you can jump straight on over to that. So if you want to see and hear how epic these gang vocals are going to be the only place to do is on that live stream coming up in five minutes time. Thank you everyone for being here. Sorry for the uh, false start at the front there where we had some issues with the audio. Thank you everyone for, uh, for, for bearing with me there. And uh, yeah, if you do have any other questions and you've watched on the replay, do drop them down in the comments and let me know. Our question of the week is, are you going to buy a new iPhone or new iPad? Are you, have you ordered one? Are you in the market for one? I'm intrigued because it is, it's that middle, it's that S update time. So there's nothing revolutionary, it is evolutionary. So that's the way I'd look at these, these iPhone and iPad changes that we have here. But until next time, uh, that is going to do it here. Why don't we uh, take us out with another little Kronk Song theme here. This is uh, Mark Kronk Song Lovell who does our theme song. Thank you again to everyone for being here. Please be kind to yourselves, be kind to others. Keep creating and I'll see you in five. Minutes. Take us away, Krog Song. Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly.